Welcome to Traeger Kitchen Live. I'm Danielle Bennett, also known as DivaQ, one of Traeger's pit masters. And tonight, I am so excited to be here in my backyard in Central Florida. And I am going to bring you some of the most delicious steakage I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about butter basted porterhouse steaks, and they're about this thick. We're talking about incredibly creamy, delicious scallop potatoes, and of course, a kick butt cocktail with some delicious grilled oranges. That's right, right here tonight on Traeger Kitchen Live. So. It is hot out here, everybody. It is the summertime. We are in the full heat of summer, and we're gonna get it kicked off tonight by making some scallop potatoes. Now those creamy, dreamy scallop potatoes are something that I love off the grill because we're giving it that wood-fired kiss. Tonight, I'm actually using three grills, three grills tonight. I've got the Traeger Ranger. We're gonna be searing off the steaks on that. I've got the Traeger Pro. We're gonna be doing the potatoes on that tonight. And I've got the Traeger Timberline and we're gonna be smoking our steaks on that. So we've got a lot of equipment we're using tonight and it is gonna be so much fun. So let's get it kicked off, shall we? So we're gonna start off by making a delicious scallop potato dish. Now there's a couple of tricks and tips when you're making scallop potatoes so that they're creamy and dreamy and thickened and absolutely delicious. And of course, cheesy goodness. So let's start off by assembling our lovely cream. Yeah, that's right, we're using full fat cream because this is a full fat kind of dish, okay? So we're gonna start off with a little pot, really simple. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some chipotle peppers. Chipotle, chipotle, however you want to say it. We're going to take some of those and we have actually already pre-chopped these. Now, depending on how much you want to spice up your life, those cans are about seven ounces. So I'm kind of a moderate kind of person. So I'm going to put in hmm, probably about two ounces. So you can see I've actually chopped these up really finely or you can actually chop these in a little food processor, get them all pureed. I like the chunkier pieces. It's my house, so that's what we're doing here get those into a little pot just like that. I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, and some smoked paprika. Now, here's a tip. Not all smoked paprikas are equal, so make sure you buy a really good quality smoked paprika. The flavor is big and bold, and it's perfect for all that potato goodness. Now, of course, to this, yeah, that's it. We're bringing in the heavy duty stuff. This is heavy whipping cream because that's what we want. We want that big, bold, creamy, luxurious taste. So all of that's gonna go in this little pot. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna go and you wanna take this pot, put it on a little stove top or in a little induction cooker. You wanna whisk it continuously. Now you don't wanna do this up pretty high. You wanna do it on moderate heat because you don't wanna actually scorch any of that cream in there. And remember, all these recipes tonight can be found at TraegerGrills.com and make sure that you have that app on your phone. Check out how many incredible recipes there are. We have, like, honest to goodness, we have so many, like, truly wonderfully talented cooks, chef yard, chefs, backyard rock stars, and people like me, professional barbecuers on there with an amazing array of, you know, recipes, helpful tips and tricks. And of course, you can find out all about all of our grills accessories and all the goodness that happens at Traeger Grills. So, because you know what? We work smarter, not harder around here. I already have this step done. So this took about 15 to 20 minutes, moderate heat, keep whisking it. And you're gonna notice that it goes a lovely shade of pink. So we've already got some here. As you can see, it gets nice and creamy and dreamy. And I'm telling you, this stuff is the bomb. Now, you always wanna taste it after you heat it up. Make sure you take a fork or a spoon or something. Give it a little taste after it's come up to temp. That's fairly warm still. And then adjust for salt, okay? Because salt will come out differently at that point. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add in just a little more salt to taste and then adjust it. So now that we have our cream base, let's talk about the potatoes. So tonight I am using russet potatoes. I think that they're the best for this application. Now, you wanna have all your potatoes sliced up and submerged into nice cold water. So. We already did this step. So here I've got all my potatoes. Now here is a really important tip when it comes to making the most amazing scalloped potatoes. Once you're having your potatoes all sliced up, make sure you actually pat down the excess water. Now, to get potatoes done right, you wanna have your potatoes all about the same thickness. That's actually really key. So you can see that they've, they've you know, they've all crisped up in the water, but they're all about the same thickness that makes a big difference. You don't want a half inch 
piece of potato next to a quarter inch piece of potato. You want them consistent because then they're gonna cook consistently. So here's what I recommend. This is a mandolin slicer, okay? And usually it has a safety guard. So normally at your house, you wanna make them just nice, simple, consistent slices, okay? And that'll give you that lovely consistency, perfect for cooking evenly. Remember, consistent slices will give you that consistency in actual cooking times. Now, paper towel into a bowl. Let's take out some of these and then pat them dry. Really, really important. Now, if you're on our Facebook page, if you're on our YouTube page, on Traeger Grills, you guys could ask questions throughout this entire one hour broadcast tonight. That's right, you can ask all the questions you want. But while we're getting this out of here, Brian, do we have some questions tonight? So the question I just got was, can we use other kinds of potatoes? Yes, you can. However, the waxier potatoes don't break down as nicely as the russet potatoes. So I would personally strongly recommend the russets. So once you have them in your bowl, give them a nice pat down with all of that paper toweling just to remove any excess water. Remember, we want lovely pieces of potato, but we don't want watery scalloped potatoes. We want that creaminess to seep into the potatoes to get delicious. And of course, using the Traeger tonight, we want that wood fire goodness. So get the potatoes all padded off just like that. You can see now they're fairly dry looking. We're gonna get rid of this. Here we go. By the way, my helper tonight, it's Gabe. Yay, thanks Gabe. All right, now once we have our potatoes, you wanna grab a cast iron pan, either nine or 10 inches, and I've already got this one started. And what we wanna do is we wanna build up layers. Really important to build up layers. So I've got a couple layers going here already. So you wanna take your lovely slices, you wanna fan them out all the way around in your cast iron dish. Now make sure you either oil it up, butter it up, non-stick it up before you add in these layers. Get your potato layers just like that. We've also got some other things in here tonight. We've got some salt and pepper and some spring onions. I like spring onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a sprinkle of spring onions on that layer. I'm gonna come in again with some pepper. We're gonna come in with some salt. And of course, the most important thing right now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in some of that delicious, creamy, dreamy, beautiful, heavy cream with all of that chipotle. Now, I don't know about you, I'm a huge fan of cheese. So I happen to have a three cheese blend here. Now, you can add Gruyere, you know, shredded Gouda. Maybe you even like blue cheese. I'm not in that category, but I know there's people out there that like blue cheese. You can use any cheese you want. Go ahead and repeat all the layers until you get it right about the top. And then what you wanna do, here's a tip, press everything down nice and evenly just like that okay now once you do that here's the next thing and here's a tip for you get your grill going at 350 degrees fahrenheit yeah that's right 350 degrees fahrenheit because what we're going to do is we're going to break down some of these potatoes before we get to our steaks another tip grab yourself a piece of foil make it a little easier on yourself so 350 degrees to the grill we're going to cover this up with foil and in about 30 minutes, we're gonna come back and we're gonna add a couple of things and remove the foil. So that's step one, go into the grill. Creamy, dreamy scalloped potatoes and a whole bunch of goodness. And like I said, 350 degrees, go into the grill. Questions, Brian? What do we got? So the question I just got was how long we soak the potatoes for? Actually about 15 to 20 minutes, that's about it not that hard but it does make a significant difference you see there's a whole bunch of extra starch on those potatoes and we want our potatoes done beautifully so we're going to give it just that little bit of time it'll make all the world of difference now you ready for the next stage i'm ready for this are you ready for some steaks gabe can i have my double stack of steak trays all right these are some of the sexiest steaks we have ever used on traeger kitchen live and we are taking this to a mac daddy level tonight now I'm gonna go get gloved up. Things are about to get a little messy around here. Brian, question? Uh, could you make the cheese first before and add more smoke flavor? So the question is, can I add the cheese and make more smoke flavor? In fact, you can actually smoke that heavy whipping cream on the grill if you actually wanna add another layer of wood fire goodness. 
All you have to do is actually take your heavy whipping cream, put it in a half pan, set your grill to 180 degrees, and smoke it for about 30 minutes. Make sure you give it a stir every five to seven minutes, just so it doesn't get that like skimmy, like, you know, texture on the top of the pan. And that way you can actually smoke your cream before you get to the actual building of that cream sauce. You can, of course, add more cheese to that sauce as well. Finely grated Parmesan, Parmesan, that's for my friend John out there. And then of course, lots of goodness from any other types of cheese you like, including by the way, black truffle cheddar, which I have done that recipe with a couple times. So tonight we have one of my all time favorite steaks. Now I know we have done a lot of things with prime rib. We've done a lot of ribeyes, we've done flank steaks. This is the first time ever we have done this Mac Daddy cut of meat. Now take a look at this. This is over two inches thick. This is a true porterhouse. Now a porterhouse to me is one of the biggest, baddest, best steaks out there for one simple reason. It's the best of both worlds. You have on this side, you have the beef tenderloin. You know what that is. That is that succulent, delicious, decadent, you know, melt in your mouth type of meal uh, right there. And then on this side, we have the strip. Big, beefy, bold flavors. Now, this is of course on a T-shaped bone. Now, if it was under 1.25 inches, it would actually be considered a T-bone. And typically and traditionally on a porterhouse, you actually have a much more prominent piece of the beef tenderloin. That's why this gets to call itself a porterhouse. And by the way, life, as I said earlier today, is all about balance. So we're gonna have some very happy people tonight. Now, how do you make your steaks even better? Well, we're gonna start off by a butter based on them. We're gonna butter base them and then we're gonna actually season them up with actually one of my favorite rubs tonight. This is Traeger's Prime Rib Rub. So this is onion and garlic goodness. It's got a little hint of rosemary in there. It's got so much goodness in this. And this is my go-to steak rub. Yeah, because it has got all the goodness you ever want in a steak seasoning. It's so good on so many things. So how do we make it? We've got some unsalted butter. We just melted it up. Now, to amp up the flavor, I've got some stone ground Dijon mustard. It adds a lovely flavor boost gonna get that whisked up and uh, this is one of our Traeger brushes. Now, when it comes to brushes, not all brushes are created equal. I'm a huge fan of the silicone brushes. Here's why. Notice there's no break point on the silicone brush. Really important when you're shopping for, you know, barbecue tools or barbecue tools that you really, really should be shopping for, look for barbecue brushes that don't have any break in the seam. That means that there's no possibility of any bacteria getting in there. So this is why I love this brush so much. So to that mustard and butter combination, we're gonna pour in an umami bomb. So what is an umami bomb? Well, an umami bomb is something that's gonna give you that other flavor profile, that, that just that's something you can't put your fingers on. And for us tonight, that is Worcestershire sauce. Now, Worcestershire sauce has been around for a very long time. You know, it has actually got anchovies in it and anchovies are gonna give you that something special in there. It's gonna give you that beautiful big flavor boost. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this beautiful butter base and you wanna coat your steaks now. Yeah, we're coating these beauties up and be generous. Remember, you eat all sides, so make sure you season all sides. And this recipe does enough for at least four to five steaks. Remember, once again, if you're looking for any of the recipes for tonight, make sure you visit TraegerGrills.com. Also take a look at all the recipe section in there. And also make sure you take a look at the community around there. We love our Traeger hood. We had so much fun just recently talking about all things with the IPO launch. It has been so much fun and seeing everybody doing so great in the Traeger hood has been such a benefit. Now, once again, coating all of these sides. Now I've got the Timberline going at 225 degrees right now. And tonight, let's see, I think we put hickory and oak in there, Gabe. Gabe says, yes, we put hickory and oak in there. Remember, at your house, that all natural wood pellet is your choice. You can also take the opportunity and make your own custom blends at home of wood fired pellets as well. Yeah, that's right. Take a bag of mesquite, mix it with cherry, experiment at your own house, and maybe you can come up with your own flavor blend to make yourselves happy. So we're almost done here. And as you can see, the steaks are cold. So this slather actually adheres to the meat really, really well, which is really nice. Now, because we are going to the grill with such beautiful, 
thick, delicious steaks. One of the things I always remind people to do is actually make sure the steaks go to the grill nice and cold. And the reason we go to the, to the grill nice and cold is you wanna give these steaks as much opportunity as possible to get that delicious wood fired, you know, experience in there. If you go to the, to the grill with warm steaks, it's gonna take away a lot of time to get that wood fired goodness in there. So our steaks are all slathered up with that beautiful butter based. Now we're gonna go to our Traeger prime rib rub. Now be generous with this. Thick steaks take a lot of rub and seasoning, they can. So make sure you come up, woo, almost lost it. Season all the sides, cause you eat all the sides generously with this beautiful barbecue rub. And once again, Timberline is going to 225 degrees. Brian? What colors do I use for steaks? So once again, with the steaks, hickory and oak. Gabe says hickory and oak tonight, Brian. Okay, so the question tonight, why a porterhouse and not a ribeye? Well, the ribeye is a single, you know, solid piece of meat. Nothing against a, a ribeye, absolutely. But I think that the porterhouse, with the best of both worlds, might have a bit of an edge on the ribeye for flavor components. Also, who doesn't love gnawing on meat off of a bone? I mean, I know I do. And that bone is going to give it a lot of moisture. One more question, Brian. So the question is, are these steaks aged? No, they're not. But you can, of course, use aged steaks. You know, there's so many different resources these days for steaks online, available from really good quality grocers. I got these locally. These are some just beautiful steaks from a friend of mine. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cuts of meat. All right, we're all seasoned up, everybody. So once we have these gorgeous steaks seasoned up, you're gonna notice that right away, there is gonna be some dampness occurring. Now that's partially from the butter base, and it's also because the moment you add salt to any cut of meat, one of the things is it's gonna draw out some of the myoglobin. Myoglobin is just that watery stuff that's in there. That's a good thing, because when that water heads to the grill, one of the great things is, is that smoke is water soluble and it's gonna attract even more delicious flavor. So we're gonna get these to the grill. And once again, we're using the Timberline tonight. Yeah, this beautiful big Mac Daddy grill tonight. Now, we're gonna put these on the bottom rack. You see, I've got two that have already been smoked at the top. So how do we know when to pull these steaks off? Well, pretty simple. Digital thermometer is the way to go. So, our steaks are on. I get to pass this off to the little man. We'll get the counters wiped down. And let's talk about the next set of temperatures you need to focus on. Can you pass me those wipes, Gabe? Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. So the steaks are going to the grill right now. We're smoking them at 225 degrees. Now, when do we pull them off? Well, depending on how thick your steaks are, it could be as little as 30 minutes to as much as one hour. Basically, what I'm gonna advise you, make sure you grab your probe and take your steaks to about 95 to 100 degrees internal temperature. Now, I would really recommend that when you are doing your steaks, measure on the tenderloin side. Now, that tenderloin side tends to cook faster than the strip side. You see, a porterhouse is sometimes a little more challenging of a steak to cook because it's got two very distinctive proteins. Now, because of that, here's a tip for all you lovers of rare steaks. Now, we didn't show this tonight, but here is a tip for you. If you want to absolutely ensure that your tenderloin is rare or medium rare, do yourself a favor. Grab a little bag of ice, press it on top of the tenderloin side only. It's gonna drop the temperature down about five degrees lower than the strip side, and that'll make sure that you always end up with perfect done steaks every time right to 100 degrees and they're both going to be there at the same time all right so while we're waiting for our steaks to smoke at 225 degrees while we're waiting on our potatoes to cook at 350 degrees covered with foil how about we work on a cocktail so let's grab some orange slices a little bit of brown sugar and let's talk about the cocktail we're going to make tonight on the grill and it is a special one thanks gabe all right you want to put that right there buddy Thank you very much. So, light brown sugar to start. Thank you very much. Beautiful orange slices, and I've got some done already if you wanna grab those, Gabe. Thanks, buddy. Gabe's rocking his new Traeger shirt. So, 
Here's the key thing. We're gonna be doing a beautiful burnt orange cocktail tonight. Now, orange essence in cocktails, especially ones with rye and bourbons and whiskeys, are an absolute delicious addition. So, I've got some beautiful orange slices here. I'm, of course, in the citrus state here in Florida. Got about 500 acres right down the road from me. So, I'm kind of beloved of all things citrus. But here's the thing. We want them to end up looking like this. See all those beautiful caramelized edges? This is what we're going for. We're actually purposely actually overcooking them a bit to get those crispy bits, to get that delicious caramelized flavor on the orange slices. One of the great things is you can actually do this up a couple of days before you want your cocktails and that makes it really easy. So all you have to do is you have to take your, your orange slices, coat them up in a little bit of brown sugar. That's it. Just coat them up just like that and then get them to the grill. Now, you can do one of two things. You can smoke them at 225 degrees, or you can do like I did and actually just grill them off at about 400 degrees. Pretty simple. Now, if you've got to average out your grills, and I hear this a lot from some people, like what if you've only got one grill? Well then, this is a great opportunity to do this in advance, or do them at the temperature of the highest setting of the item that you're last doing, which for us, well, that is the 350 degrees of the lovely potato dish we're doing tonight. So getting all of our orange slices beautifully coated in brown sugar. And what we're gonna do with these is once they're all nicely caramelized up like this, we're actually gonna drop them into an agave mixture. Yeah, agave is a beautiful addition to a beautiful cocktail. So right to the grill, deliciously coated orange slices. Brian, do we have some questions? Pardon me? So the question we have is, are there any plans to do in-person classes right now? Well, right now, due to the circumstances of the world we're living in, we are actually continuing to do Traeger private table classes. So if you go to the TraegerGrills.com website, look under the community tab for the next set of private table classes. In fact, the September classes are getting listed any day now. There's some really exciting ones coming along with pitmasters like myself and others. So make sure you take the opportunity to check that out. Our classes are so much fun. They're a small class size at Traeger Grills. We get this wonderful amount of one-on-one -on -one interaction with our fans and people that just want to learn some really great techniques. So make sure you check that out under Traeger Shop Classes. Brian? <laughs> Really? That's a question tonight? <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, that's a new one. All right, orange slices on there. <laughs> I'll get rid of that. Here we go, Bri. All right, so the question I just got was, am I Canadian? Yes, by birth. However, I have been in Florida now seven years. I'm almost an American. How about that for an answer? No, I'm not from Minnesota, but thanks for asking. Bri? What's the next question, please, sir? Are there people with just one grill? So the question is, are there people with just one grill? Well, personally, I'm not one of the people that has just one grill. And I think everybody needs a multitude of grills. But I also collect grills like, you know, some women collect shoes. So I would recommend that everybody have a couple of grills. And the reason is, is that, you know, sometimes you want to do things at 225 degrees. Sometimes you want to do things like, you know, like that low and slow temperature. And then other times you want to do things hot and fast, like, you know, barbecuing and grilling things that, you know, take 350 to 400 degrees. Now, if you only have one grill, and I certainly understand that, what you always want to do is you want to stage out your food, cooking the most lengthy things first, right? So if you're doing a pork butt and a pot of beans, you, of course, start the pot of beans last and get that pork butt on early. If you wanna just do some grilled orange slices and if it's for a cocktail, get them done up ahead of time. All right, so let's talk about how we make that agave syrup. So, once you've got your oranges completely done, here is a beautiful tip for you. This is a loaf pan, disposable loaf pan. One of the greatest things I do is a lot of syrups in these pans to make delicious cocktails. So I've got some agave syrup here mixed up with water. Now. The reason I mix up with water is that we're going to put this on the grill to smoke 225 degrees for about 30 minutes, okay? That's a really important thing. You want it to be at about that temperature, okay? 225 degrees for about 30 minutes. So take your orange slices, pop it in your pan with the delicious orange slices, and get it on your grill smoking at 225 degrees. 
What's going to happen is that these are going to infuse this agave syrup with those orange essences. And then the other thing is, save a few for garnish at the end and also for a little bit more infusion. See, that's really important. We want to make sure that we get all that delicious orange flavor in there and making everything good. So back to the grill, 225 degrees. Now, once it's been on there for about 30, 40 minutes, you want to take it off and you want to chill it down because honestly, nobody wants to start a cocktail with hot syrup. So get this done, 30 minutes, then pop it in the fridge for a couple of hours, get it all chilled down. All right, back to the grill we go, 225. Now, once your potatoes have been on for about half an hour, it's time to uncover them and go to the next layer of goodness. So you see, since our potatoes are covered, they're not gonna get a lot of color on the top. Additionally, there's one other thing you wanna put on the grill, this stuff right here. When you go to uncover your delicious goodness that is those potatoes, put four or five strips of bacon on the grill. Remember, it's going at 350 degrees. Because it's going at 350 degrees, we wanna make sure that we get those lovely strips of bacon nice and crispy. So, I happen to have a plate, happen to have a fork, I also happen to have some tongs. So we're gonna go over to the grill. We've got the pro going at 350 degrees tonight and it's got two trays of potatoes. I've got one that we just put on there and another one that I actually just, you know, finished a little earlier today to get it going, okay? So we're to the pro. We're gonna take that cover of the foil off. Now, once you take that foil cover off, this is when you really wanna put those slices of bacon on your grill. I've already done that for us tonight. Now, one of the benefits of being a Traeger owner is this stuff right here. You guys know what I'm talking about. This is Traeger bacon. Now look at how perfectly crispy it is. Nobody has time for floppy bacon, by the way. I am on team crispy bacon. Go ahead and fight me on this. But look at how perfect this bacon is coming off the Traeger grill. So we've got those beautiful crispy pieces of bacon. We're removing the foil now. Here you go, Gabe. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you what it looks like. Yeah, cause we're about halfway done. So it's been on for about 30 minutes, about halfway done. We've got our potatoes on there and now we're gonna try to get a little more color on those potatoes. So take a look. Once you take that cover off, we're gonna start seeing a little bit of crispiness on the edges. And now we're gonna make sure we put it back on the grill for about 30 more minutes to get it even crispier. Now, if you've got your bacon already done, take your bacon, pull it off in pieces and get it crumbled all across the top. And let me tell you, this bacon is absolutely the bomb, everybody. It really is. I love Traeger bacon. For anybody that's doing meal prep as well, if you start your week off with a pound of bacon off the Traeger, the opportunities are endless. You got that for salads, you got it for sandwiches, you got some breakfast for frittata stuff going on. You got lots of opportunities. And then the other thing I would do, if you're gonna put the bacon on top as well, you know, you might wanna jazz it up with just a few more onions, okay? Get that back on the grill about another 30 minutes or so. So about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. And how you can tell the potatoes are done is when you can actually put the fork through them and there's little to no resistance, okay? The potatoes should be about 205 to 210 degrees at that point. Once again, cast iron pan, uncovered now, back to the grill. Brian? So the question I just got was how long did I soak the potatoes for? Well, the potatoes were actually soaked for just a couple of hours. It doesn't take a lot, but you do want to make sure that that lovely, lovely water is ice cold. We want to make sure our potatoes are nice and crisp when they go on there. But remember that tip about always making sure to soak off with paper towels, any excess water. Now let's talk about steaks because you know, we're here for the steaks tonight. Potatoes are fine, cocktails are fine, but let's just take a look at our steaks. And once again, I'm gonna grab a digital thermometer. I'm gonna check the temps of a couple I've already got on there. Brian? So digital thermometers that I use are the Thermapen and the meter. Depends on the size of the meat I'm doing. Either one of those works fantastic on the grill. Or, of course, if your Traeger has a probe on it, one of the key things you can do is use Wi-Fi or technology, set it on your phone and have a probe reminder. That makes your life even easier because we all walk around with our phones all the time now. So we want to give our lovely steaks a check. 
we want to make sure that they're up to about 100 degrees and then we want to pull them off okay so I'm gonna pull those steaks off for a minute and then we're gonna go back and revisit a cocktail all right tray tongs back to the grill go ahead Brian um, I always put raw meats on the bottom so just to let you know you should never ever ever have raw meat over cooked meat so your raw meat should always be on the bottom your cooked meat should always be on the top and you should never ever ever put chicken over anything else chicken over chicken always really we want to make sure that everybody has a safe and fun grilling environment so make sure you use every utilization of food practices that are safe all right so I wanted to pull these steaks out just so you get an idea of why it's so important to smoke your steaks. Take a look. Now these aren't done yet. We're almost there. But I want you guys to see how beautiful that delicious piece of meat is. And I'm holding on for dear life right now, okay? So take a look at this beautiful color in here. Take a look at that lovely, deep, rich mahogany color. You get that from reverse searing a steak. And then also you'll notice that the fat has started to render out quite significantly. And we got some beautiful goodness. Take a look at that deliciousness. That is a happy piece of meat, people. Happy, happy, happy pieces of meat. Now, while these steaks are sitting here, I've got the Ranger now on. Now, the Ranger is one of our portable grills. It's got an eight pound hopper and it comes with actually a variety of plates. We've got the cast iron plate and we've got the regular grill grates that go in there. Now, one of the key things is that the Traeger grates are fine and dandy, but sometimes a girl just needs herself some cast iron. So we're gonna be actually utilizing the cast iron insert tonight on the Ranger. So that's the one I've got going right here. And I've actually already sprayed it with some nonstick spray. That's really key for me. Nonstick spray, I've got a nonstick olive oil spray. You can use a butter spray. Any of those things work just fine. I just think it's a really good idea. Now, when you go and do your searing, make sure you stay with your meat because from 100 degrees to about 125 to 130 degrees, which is my finished temperature preference, that's really key and it can happen just like that. So don't be opening up social media. Don't be looking on anything. Be one with your meat, everybody, okay? So we're gonna give that a minute. We're gonna let the grill come back up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna be doing those onto the Traeger Ranger tonight. All right, questions? So I can grab a drink. So the question is, are these videos saved on the app? Yes, they are. One of the great things about TraegerGrills.com and our app is there is literally, oh my gosh, we've got over a thousand recipes on there right now. Um, you can check out my recipe for 321 ribs. And also to go along with tonight's steaks, I would highly, highly recommend you check out my recipe for reverse seared steaks with shallot compound butter. I might just happen to have a tray of that over here tonight to finish off some steaks with because you know what who doesn't love butter and a compound finishing butter for steaks is a beautiful thing brian question oh how hot does the ranger get mm. so the next question is how hot does the ranger get the ranger goes all the way up to 450 degrees fahrenheit and that is plenty of heat to sear a steak. You see, a lot of times people think they have to have like, you know, an incredibly crazy, like thousand degree, you know, cast iron pan or something. You actually don't. Meat sugars caramelize at a much lower temperature than that, about 350 to 375. So as long as you can get to that rate, you can sear a steak. Now, if you don't have a Traeger Ranger, one of the things you can do is you can take just a standard cast iron pan and put it on the pro or put it on the timberline or even the ironwood and that way you can get the temperature up and sear your steak and finish it on your own cast iron pan or even a steel plate those are becoming much more popular these days so those are a couple of options as well so if you don't have the ranger but seriously get a ranger you would be so surprised how many times i've traveled with this all over the place it literally goes in the back of my truck. We tailgate with it. We go to the beach with it. So super versatile. And of course, it's here in my backyard. We treat it honestly like a flat top. So we do like Philly cheesesteaks on it. We've done, you know, eight grilled cheese at a time. We do some Rubens. Um, oh my gosh, we do so much stuff on there. We've done waffles or not waffles. We've done pancakes on it. So super awesome portable size grill that gives you a lot of delicious flavor opportunities. 
So perfect for doing a couple of racks of ribs as well. You can find all the specs on the Traeger Ranger at TraegerGrills.com under grill types. Brian? So question is, is what is my absolute go-to pellet? Hickory. I'm a hickory girl through and through. Bry, can you, or Gabe, can you take this, honey? Thank you, bug. Appreciate you, buddy. All right, so my go-to, absolute, positive, favorite pellet is hickory. I love hickory. I grew up eating hickory, you know, kissed wood-fired things. And so over the years, that is my go-to. Right now, I have about a thousand pounds of Traeger pellets in my garage right now. And I'm just gonna guess conservatively about 500 pounds of that is actually hickory. But a lot of times what I like to do, and I said this earlier, is I like to combine different types of pellets. We have the new pellet boxes actually. Gabe, you wanna grab one of them? I'll show you guys what I do. Really super easy, because we've got a couple of minutes here while we're getting things done. One of the things I like to do, and I mentioned this earlier, is I love to make custom blends of pellets. And you know why I like to do that? Because it's my house. So we have some great pellet hopper containers now. These are the stay dry hopper pellet containers. Traeger doesn't even know I'm bringing these out. I just love them. I think they're great because you can actually stack them one on top of each other. So you open this up, put half a bag of Traeger, you know, hickory in, half a bag of like Traeger cherry or make your own blend. And then what I like to do is I like to take a piece of tape, like painter's tape, and I'll write my combo on the top so I don't forget. Um, that's a great way to keep them dry, safe, and then you can do your own custom blends. So these are available at TraegerGrills.com. Also, make sure if you're looking for products, you can always access our Traeger dealer locator. You know, that's kind of important, you know, that we've got dealers all over the place, all over the world, in fact. So all you have to do is plug in your location and you can find the dealer closest to you. All right, let's get back to the cocktail and let's do that up right. All right, so our agave went on to the grill. Can you get me that little glass of agave, Gabe? It's in the kitchen. Thanks, buddy. And let me show you my other ingredients tonight for the cocktail. Because I'm feeling a little thirsty. It is hot as Hades out here tonight. We're like almost a hundred degrees before we take care of the grill temp. So I'm feeling a cocktail. So I've got a muddler here. I've got a couple of those lovely oranges I did earlier. I have got a whole bunch of mint. Yeah, can I have that game? Thanks. Thanks buddy. So I'm gonna put in, I don't know, five or six, you know, minty pieces. By the way, for the record, I did not grow this. So Emily, my dear friend, if you are watching me, my mint died again. Yes, I know you keep telling me it's, it is, you know, a weed and I shouldn't kill it, but I really did kill it once again. So I've got mint in there, got a couple of the orange slices. Um, I'm going to add in some orange bitters. I'm kind of a fan of this. So I'm going to put in one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I really like the orange bitters. So. We're at my house, so we want to make sure that we have those big, bold flavors in there. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show you guys, now that it's come chilled out of the fridge, this is that delightfully delicious orange-infused agave syrup. So remember, that's the agave nectar. That's a little bit of water, a lot of smoke that we gave it on the grill at 225 degrees. And then I infused it with a couple of more of those orange slices. So I'm going to put in a little bit of that into my cocktail shaker as well just like that. Now on top of that, we're going to go in with our muddler. Now that all those things have come to the party and we're going to muddle some of that mint and that orange together. And the reason is, is that I want that mint to release some of the oils and I feel all fancy like a bartender right now. Shout out to my friends who are real bartenders. I know I'm just playing pretend, but I feel good about this. Thanks to our partner at uh, Whistle Pig hooking me up again. We've got a beautiful Whistle Pig piggyback rye tonight. One of my go-tos. Um, if you want to do this with another type of Whistle Pig, you go right ahead, but I'm a big fan of this one and the Homestock one. So we've got everything all muddled up, looking fine. I've got a Yeti. Because it is so hot out here, thank God for Yeti or else all of my ice would be water by now. So we're gonna put in some ice cubes in there. There we go. I'm gonna add in a little bit of this rye. And remember, adjust accordingly. Depending on how your day has gone, adjust your rye. So, good day, not a good day. You had a really ick day. Just saying, adjust accordingly. Now, because it's my house, I'm also gonna slice open a fresh orange. 
This is my addition to this recipe. And I'm gonna squeeze in some fresh orange juice because it's my house. And I think if it's your house, you should do what you want. So, got some fresh orange juice kicking in there. Giving it a good squeeze. Working out some muscles right there. All right, muddle everything up again. Make sure everything's all prettied up. Grab yourself a glass. Get an orange slice in the bottom. Get some ice in there. Get an orange slice or three at the top. Looking all pretty and fine. Once again, pretending to be a bartender tonight. Tuck in some pretty, pretty mint. Grab one of these sproingy things. I'm not quite sure. What are these things called? I have no idea. Strainer, strainer, sproingy thing. Strainer, sproingy thing for the win. Apologies to my real bartender friends. Get that into the glass and you have one hell of an amazing cocktail. Let me tell you, I am going to be enjoying this one tonight immensely. Normally I don't drink on Traeger Kitchen Lives. Tonight is gonna be an exception. Here you go, Gabe. Thanks, bug. You can take that away too. All right, so cheers everybody. Amazing cocktail. Brian, you got a question? Because I'm gonna start drinking. Does the container hold a bag of pellets? Does the, <laughs> so the question is, it made me laugh. Does the container hold a bag of pellets? Yeah, just about. It works fantastic. Brian? Where can I get a hat like that? So somebody wants to know where they can get this hat? You can't. You actually have to be given one. I don't sell them. I never have sold them ever, ever, ever. Only about three people have ever been given a DivaQ hat for extraordinarily and incredible, um, what, contributions to barbecue goodness. How about that? I do give them out occasionally. That's about it. Cheers. What else you got? Yeah, so the question is, can you use a cast iron skillet if you don't have the insert on the uh, Ranger? Absolutely. Like I said earlier, you can use a cast iron pan. You could also, of course, really easily, you could use a steel plate on there too. All right, guys, it's time to sear some steaks. And I'm pretty excited about this because we don't usually do this live. Um, so got my steaks. They've been hanging out. Got my grill. It's rocking out. Got the nonstick spray on here. And I always like to start with the fat side. So I'm going to take the fat side and we're going to put it right there. I'm going to hold it for a minute while I grab the next steak. If I can with my tongs. Thank God I got long arms tonight. Now, one of the things I like to do, just hold them there for a couple minutes. Pretty simple. We'll take another question while I'm doing this. Okay, so here's a great question for somebody. Can you smoke on the Ranger a brisket? Now, I don't think you could do a whole brisket, you know, an entire packer cut, but there is no reason why you could not do a seven or eight pound brisket flat. And the great thing is, is that the hopper is eight pounds. So you might have to fill it up twice, but that should be about it. Brian? What else you got? What's your next question? All right, here's a suggestion for everybody. Make sure you go to TraegerGrills.com and download all the recipes for tonight. Butter basted porterhouse steaks. We have got our creamy, dreamy chipotle and bacon scalloped potatoes. And of course, our burnt orange. Really delicious cocktail. And tonight I'm rocking it out with some whistle pigs. So thanks very much to them. Uh, hey, Gabe, you're going to have to bring that whistle pig bottle back, okay? Now, while these steaks are cooking, next thing we're going to do is we're going to, I've been counting in my head how many seconds. Usually what I like to do is for every side about 30 seconds, and then I temp them, and then I keep turning them over. So, 30 seconds. I want to show you guys the color we've already got on this beautiful steak. Look at that. Yeah, that's why you want a ranger for sure. Flip it over. Getting all this goodness on there. Counting another 30 seconds. Now, the next part of steaks that is so very important is once your steaks come off, really really key that you let them rest it is so important to let steaks rest because up until this point we've actually been aggressively hitting them with all of that you know incredible amount of heat and that wood fire goodness and now we want the steaks to chill out to relax to rest and to do their thing so make sure when your steaks come off the grill they have an opportunity to rest so i'm going to grab my digital thermometer i'm going to check the temps that's been about a minute now I'm at 126, I'm at 128, 
I'm at 120, 130 right on there. And I'm at 133 on that. As far as I'm concerned, we're done, okay? My stakes are done. Grab me my cutting board. Now, when you've got big, beautiful stakes like this, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is the hardest part of the whole night. Don't touch them, don't, don't even look at them wrong, okay? Because we've been cooking them all this time, we need these to literally rest for 10 to 15 minutes. And that is truly a challenge because they smell amazing. They look amazing. I wanna dive in right away, but you're really well served if you let them rest. So because we know about the timing of tonight, I have two that are already rested. Pass them on over. All right, Gabe, you put those Mac Daddy steaks right there. I'll pass those off to you, buddy. All right, so we're gonna grab a fresh cutting board, everybody. We're gonna get right into here. Gotta have the good looking cutting board tonight. We've got our beautiful, big, succulent, juicy, porterhouse seared steaks done in butter. And once again, to review, we slathered these with Worcestershire, Dijon, and literally melted butter. We put them back on the grill with Traeger Prime Rib Rub. Here you go, Gabe. Thanks, buddy. Traeger Prime Rib Rub. Then we smoked them until they were about 100 degrees internal temperature. Now, once they reached 100 degrees internal temperature, we then took them from the 225 degree grill and we put them on the sear plate right there on the cast iron part of the beautiful Ranger. Once again, the option is, is that if you at home don't have a Ranger, make sure you take the opportunity to utilize a cast iron pan. Now, I happen to have some compound butter. We're gonna slather some of that on there because you know what? Butter and steak is a good thing. If you're looking for this Traeger shallot compound butter recipe, all you have to go, do is go to the app and that app is TraegerGrills.com. And then all you have to do is look up a reverse seared steak. You're gonna get this delicious shallot butter on there. So once my steaks are there, I'm gonna flip them over so the butter's on the bottom. Give it a little squish on the cutting board and then flip them back again. So then both sides are buttered. Just a little trick I learned. Additionally, when your steaks come off the grill, I like to grab a little of Traeger's coffee rub. It's my own personal preference. Now it doesn't make it taste like an espresso, but the coffee rub brings out some really great beefy notes in the meat. So let that sit there. You could also use just a little bit of a finishing salt. That would work fantastic as well. I'm gonna grab a fork, I'm gonna grab a knife. And the next thing I'm gonna grab is a completed tray of our delicious scallop potatoes. We're gonna go through that again, how we do them. Brian, questions here. Why did you start with the fat here? So the question was, why did I put the fat down first? Well, here's how I think of it. So if you start out with a cast iron pan or a cast iron insert and you start with beef fat, that beef fat's gonna go on the other sides. So I always start with searing the beef side that has the fat. I've always done it. Because then not only are you gonna be searing the steak, you're gonna be searing the steak in beef fat. I don't see anything wrong with that. Brian? Is the rest time based on the meat side? So the question is, is the rest time based on the meat size? Absolutely. You know, it's all about size and we love big meat. And so the bigger the meat is, the longer you should let it rest. So if these were really thin steaks, it would be five minutes and we'd be done. Because these are so big tonight, these are gorgeous, big, beautiful steaks. We wanna make sure we give it lots of time to rest. So let me grab a plate, some pretty, you know, napkins we got going on here. So let's review, shall we? We have got our butter basted, delicious Mac Daddy Porterhouse steaks with a shallot compound butter on the side, all available at TraegerGrills.com. We have our beautiful, succulent, cheesy, creamy, chipotle cream, scallop potatoes, lots of cheese, a lot of bacon. Just gonna finish those off with even more onions. And remember, you can adjust how spicy those are or how mild those are. We've also got, you know, this cocktail that I will be finishing tonight. Of course, that is the whistle pig rye in there, the six year rye. We've got our beautiful agave syrup with the, you know, the burnt oranges in there that we actually made the agave syrup from ourselves. And of course, we've got the fresh mint on there. And I think it's just about time to dig in. Brian, what else you got? 
Ah, great question from the crowd tonight. The question is salted or unsalted butter. I'm going to tell you in all cases for me personally, I will typically always use unsalted butter for one reason only control. You see, if you already add salted butter to things, whether you're making a compound butter, whether you're doing the butter base, you actually can't control the salt. But if you actually always use consistently unsalted butter, one of the benefits of that is the fact that you will know exactly how much salt it is in there based on your rubs, based on the salt additions. You know, we use a lot of ancient kosher sea salt around here, and I like to control that amount of salt myself personally. Brian? question I just got from the audience, would I use coffee rub on a pork chop? Absolutely. So let me tell you, this coffee rub, I, you notice it's always in my drawer. There's actually two containers right here because I actually love it so much. Um, so here's the thing. The coffee rub has paprika. I'm going to see if I can read all these. Uh, paprika, spices, coffee, onion, chili powder, garlic, and a whole bunch of other goodness. So basically for me, it's a go-to rub for a lot of things. Also, the coffee rub, when it comes to doing beefy items, brings out a lot of those beefy notes. And I think that's really important for getting the best out of all your meats consistently. So coffee rub, definitely one of my top favorites as well. Great question. One more, Brian. How long did you smoke them for and what Oh, the steaks. So the question is, how long did I smoke the steaks for and at what temp? So I smoked these gorgeous porterhouses tonight at 225 degrees until they got between 95 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I finished them off seared on the Ranger cast iron. Now, depending on who you are and what you are in regards to finished temperature preference likes, um, that for me usually ends up being about 125 to 130 degrees. If you want super rare, 120 degrees, 130 to 100, or sorry, 140 degrees and up. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sorry. I don't serve well done meat. I just don't do it. It's not my thing. I don't like it. And I'm sure as heck not going to do that to a beautiful piece of meat like this. So if you want a well done piece of meat, make a burger. Question? question is what what is the best way to temp a brisket well i will say this if i was working off of one of my grills and i wanted to make sure the brisket temperature was perfect i would use our wi-fi controllers and set a digital probe alarm the actual you know beautiful app that you can get on your phone that makes it really foolproof and one of the greatest things is is that you should always be temping a brisket in the thickest part of the flat so that means the one that's towards the top of a full packer cut nearest to the actual point that's the thickest part of the flat and that's going to give you the best determination of temperature all right let's cut into this bad boy so we've got this beautiful big piece of meat so how do you cut into a porterhouse well here's the thing you've got two distinct cuts of meat you have the tenderloin you have the strip so what you want to do is you want to literally just follow the bone line down okay and you want to cut that tenderloin right off just like that and then on this side, once again, we're going to follow the bone line. Pretty simple. And you're going to remove the meat from both sides. Now, here's the thing. I don't know about you at your house, but this to us was a prized possession. Um, my mother used to go after the bones more than, and more than the steak. She loved gnawing at all the bits, like right along the bones. And if the dog was lucky, they got a bl blank bone at the end. So as you can see, that comes off really easily. You can see, once again, beautiful, consistent temperature from top to bottom. That's also another benefit of doing a reverse seared steak. We didn't aggressively hit it with all that heat. We took our time with this beautiful cut of meat, making sure to smoke it low and slow and then finish it hot and fast. So it's like the perfect texture all the way across. We've got that beautiful, you know, caramelized finish on both edges. But as you can see, look at how consistent that is from top to bottom. That is a perfectly cooked steak. And here's the thing on the tenderloin side, about three to four degrees lower, little rare, my preference. But that is how you do a porterhouse properly. And look at how pretty that is. All right, so now we've got our beautiful steak. Okay, we're gonna grab a larger knife. Here we go. Got my chef's knife out now. I'm gonna cut this up into lovely, beautiful slices. And then we're gonna plate it up with some of these beautiful potatoes tonight. Get this all going good. There we go. I think one of my hairs just got there. Woo. All right, we've got this beautiful meat here. We've got the beautiful, oh, I'm telling you, it's going to be hard to resist this. This is like steak dreams, everybody. Steak dreams. So how I like to present this is we've got our tenderloin, we've got our strip. I like to put that back there. This is how I do it at my house. 
got the bone standing up. You've got the strip right there. Fan it out. Make it look pretty, everybody. Pretty food. We want pretty food. Flip it over so it's all beautiful. Just like that, everybody. Beautiful. Look, look at how perfectly cooked it is. God, I love that. God bless the Traeger hood, everybody. Love it. So we've got our beautiful steak there. And whoever grills the steak, I think, should always get the tenderloin. We've got our beautiful steak there. Gorgeous, just like that. Going to go back in with a little more of that beautiful coffee rub because we're at my house, and this is what I like. A little bit of coffee rub there. We're going to grab a fork. Woo! Close my drawer up. I want to show you guys how gorgeous these scalloped potatoes are. I want to flip this over. Look at how creamy and thick that is. I got to tell you, I don't like runny shepherd's pie and I don't like runny scalloped potatoes. So I love this texture. So you see these potatoes, they've all soaked in all of that cream. And when you pull it aside, you get this delicious thick richness. So once you take your potatoes off, here's another key for you. Just like your steak rests 15 to 20 minutes, let your potatoes rest for 15 to 20 minutes uncovered at room temperature. Now remember, we're in the heart of summer right now. It's pretty darn warm, okay? So outside here in Florida, I'm sitting at about 85 to 90 degrees. So my outdoor comfortable temperature right now, 85 degrees. If you're in a colder state, make sure you bring them into the house, but leave them uncovered and you're gonna get some of the creamiest, dreamiest, rich, luscious scalloped potatoes. They're absolutely amazing. And of course, I'm telling you, how can you resist, I'm gonna bring it over here. How can you resist a beautiful tenderloin done off of a gorgeous thick porterhouse? Wood fire goodness, I'm telling you. That's some kick ass goodness. I love it. Got one for later, gotta love that. Ending it all, yeah that's right, with an amazing rye cocktail with these gorgeous oranges in there tonight. Big sip on this with all of that muddled mint. I gotta tell you, I've been looking forward to this TKL for weeks now because I knew what I was gonna be eating tonight. This is a whole bunch of goodness. And remember, you can find all the recipes for this at TraegerGrills.com. And here's a tip. One of my favorite barbecue rock stars is coming up on the next TKL, Clarence Joseph. He is amazing, really accomplished, great barbecue guy wonderful family and i hope you join us all again for the next episode of tkl and remember you can find all of the episodes and great videos resources and all that you need at traegergrills.com one more question brian what do we got last question of the night everybody all right the question is am i making any appearances in the los angeles area actually i was just in california with my friends drinking wine no personal appearances in California, but in a couple weeks, I will be at Hartville Hardware doing their grill fest for Traeger Grills, and I can't wait to be back there. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Make sure you get the Traeger Grills app. You also may want to make sure to check out all of the Traeger Grills social media on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, IG. And of course, you can always find me, DivaQ BBQ, available online all the time on my Facebook, my Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, everybody. Be blessed. Stay safe cocktail appropriately and remember life is always too short for bad barbecue good night everybody cheers good night hmm. to finish this whole damn cocktail good stuff everybody good stuff great oh that cocktail is so good high five buddy you did great dude you did great, Bri. Bri.